Good morning. Welcome to Dial and Speak. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we have a gentleman with us this morning, and he was with us not too long ago. Um, his, let me find the information from him before. Uh, his name is Dwayne Seekman, and he is with the Ohio Corn and Wheat Growers Association. And we had a short uh, segment with him a couple of weeks ago talking about corn and wheat and how the weather's affecting all that. And we also wanted to talk about the farm bill. So he is back with us. First of all, I want to make sure we're connected. Are you there? <laughs> I, I am here. Thank you for the opportunity to, to come back. Well, I'm, I was really excited about having you. We uh, had talked, as I said, about corn and wheat, and uh, maybe we could just go over a few things about that before we talk about the the uh, farm bill. And, of course, agriculture affects all of us. I mean, that's one of, one of the few things we have to have, air, water, and food. And so we are all affected by these things. Uh, tell us what's going on in the 10 days or so since we spoke as far as the weather and the planting. How is that coming? Well, you know, Dr. Fanta, we had a we had a, a very nice break in the weather uh, from rain over the last 10 days, and, and farmers uh, uh, really uh, pulled through and, and got their crop to the ground. A lot of the corn has already emerged with the hot weather. Uh, we didn't get uh, 100% of what we're projected planted. Uh, today we'll get a better indication around uh, 4 o'clock when USDA reduced, uh, releases the uh, planting uh, progress report on how much Ohio got in the ground with corn. Farmers are continuing to plant soybeans uh, this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, we made quite a lot of progress from uh, the last time we talked. Well, good. The weather has been so bizarre. I know this morning uh, I got up and it was about 50 here, and actually I was chilly. I walked to the station, and it was actually chilly walking. I mean, we've been going from like 95 to um, uh, cold temperatures and rain and and then really hot yeah. It, it, it takes a toll on uh, not only us uh, as uh, consumers, but also uh, just plants in general, whether it's uh, food crops like corn, soybeans, and wheat, or mm-hmm. just our, our, our regular garden crops. These extremes of 95, and then we get 40-degree temperatures at night. It's, it is really uh, extremes in temperatures right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's it's. Uh, I, I kind of figured. I kind of figured that maybe it had to do with the. Uh, you know that the when the weather got so warm again, because when we talked a while back, it was water. I mean, we had just had all this rain, constant rain, and uh, then then it got extremely hot. I mean, here I think we had a record in this part of the state it was 93 or 94. Well, uh, and, and that that hot weather has helped with getting the corn out of the ground. Good. Uh, so the seed was in, and mm-hmm. I, I drove around. Uh, this weekend and Thursday and Friday, I, I saw corn out. I saw corn that has grown really fast, and so they like these early, uh, lots of sunlight, lots of hot temperatures. Uh, we had a nice shower in central Ohio on on Saturday, which is probably going to hamper some growers getting into plant soybeans, but it's uh, it's it's helped the corn, uh, and so it's allowing photosynthesis to work. And we all learned that back in uh, middle <laughs> school uh, uh, science class. So. All right. Right, we all did, and uh, it's it's just amazing, though. And and I when I, I was talking, I was gone this weekend. In fact, I was in a different part of Ohio, and it's so amazing how the weather is so different in different areas. Um, and they had huge amounts of rains apparently over the weekend in Pennsylvania. It moved a little bit east this time. We were spared from all the rain, but it's amazing how different it is you know in different parts and the amounts of rain and it's all that's typical i mean it's all it's never usually the same in different areas um is corn and wheat our corn and wheat grown in most different sections different counties in ohio uh, they are i mean the, the majority of corn um is, is is grown through in every county in the state of ohio but the majority of it is if you just look at uh uh, Cleveland to Cincinnati and everything west on uh, I-71, um, probably a couple counties to the right or to the east of I-71, and everything's grown west. Um, the wheat is grown throughout the state as well. The majority of wheat is grown in northwest Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems to be the, the largest. Uh, they have the soil. They have the right weather conditions to, to grow wheat in that part of the state. Uh-huh. It's uh, amazing that... Uh you know, I had not known where the fact that you gave us about the different kinds of wheat and the kind of wheat that was grown in Ohio and what it's used for. You know, I find that very, very interesting. I, I Maybe you can just repeat that for people who don't know. The, and then you also told us about what the corn, um, the different the corn is used for, too. But sure. the wheat, what, what kind of wheat is grown in Ohio? Uh, in, in Ohio, we grow uh, 
it's a winter wheat. It's soft red winter wheat, mm-hmm. uh, meaning when you hear winter wheat, we, the farmers will plant it in October, uh, November. Uh, it's it's in the ground throughout the winter. It it it, it emerges before uh, the snowfall. Uh, farmers really like to get a snowfall to provide insulation for that wheat, and so after the snow melts, you see a, a nice crop uh, coming up. We'll harvest that wheat in June, July. Now, soft red winter wheat is typically not uh, a wheat that is milled into flour for breads. It doesn't have the protein content that millers like and bakers like for uh, bread. It's more of a, a non leaven product, so you'll have flatbreads, you'll have uh, cookies, cakes, um, you know, I, I, meant, mm-hmm. I think I mentioned uh, communion wafers. Right. Uh, those, that's primarily uh, the focus. You, but mm-hmm. you have other classes of wheat throughout the United States. Right. Hard reds, um, which are which are your bread wheats, which are milled into nice flour. You have white wheat that can be uh, milled into flour for breads. But white wheat is uh, really, I believe, it's the it's the wheat of choice for whole grains. So that, that, and then you have durum, uh, which is uh, more in the pastas. And so wheat is different than uh, soybean and, and, and corn. You have various classes that have different qualities for milling into flour. And uh-huh. millers and bakers prefer certain uh, protein levels. And so the wheat varies on protein. I find that so interesting. I, you know, as I said last time we talked, I thought that was really, you know, because we talk about bread and certain breads with yeast, and they have the real flaky, there's flaky crusts and then there's the real stretchy yeasty doughs and so different kinds of wheats are used for different products and now I know why when I look at a catalog why there's so many different kinds of wheat. (laughs) Exactly. It is is interesting. Uh, And maybe we can talk about that again in a few minutes and I was very interested in the corn too. But let's talk about the farm bill. I have heard the term the farm bill all my life almost. Um, has there all, have there always been farm bills? Really, the, the, the original farm programs uh, were in the 1930s, and it was right after the uh, the Dust Bowl. And uh, you, you saw a need, and we saw through the Great Depression just this lack of food, and and, uh, and farmers were not able to plant. And so there were the, the federal government uh, created uh, programs for uh, soil conservation because of the Dust Bowl. We lost a lot of topsoil. Um, created programs to ensure that there was always going to be uh, crops planted. And so it was really a, a focus for consumers to make sure that uh, there was food on the table mm-hmm. uh, each and every day, each and every year. Mm-hmm. And so, But it's evolved, it's changed um, uh, throughout uh, the decades uh, since the 1930s. And it's, we, we call it the Farm Bill, but the, the name of it in 2008 was the Food Security Act. Mm-hmm. Because it's more than just protecting farmers. In fact, 75% of total expenditures out of the Food Security Act uh, do not go to uh, farm programs. It's, it's food programs, nutrition programs, uh, WIC programs, uh, etc. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, it still has that consumer focus, but the name always seems to resonate in, in the farm focus. Huh. 